Good morning, friends. I am Rajiv Jadhav, your English professor. See, in today's lecture, we are going to discuss a very simple and very short poem, yet with the deeper meaning poem written by Robert E. Frost. Friends, Robert E. Frost was born on 26 March 1874 and died on 29 January 1963. He was a well-known American poet and he had received four Pulitzer Prizes for literature. And the most important thing is that he was the only American poet who received four Pulitzer Prizes for poetry. If you examine the poem of Robert Frost, then you will understand Robert Frost's poetry based on the rural life. It means throughout his poetry, he tried to present the rural life situations in New England. See, after this, we will touch towards the title of his poem. Friends, the title of this poem, Dust of Snow. Dust means here the particle of snow. And this poetry has taken from the collection New Hemsphere. It published in 1923. See, the title of this poem indicates us the winter season. The poetry is set in the winter season. See, winter in the northern side, northern uh, area or north side England is a very large and very harsh. Okay. During this span, the nature and uh, the nature cover with the snow as well as the top of tree also covered with the snow. And what happened that, that, that day? The atmosphere was gloomy and the poet was also feeling very sad, very nervous, very disappointed. And in that situation also, he had gone out for walking. When he was, while walking by the tree, he came towards a hemlock tree. Friends, hemlock is a very poisonous tree in a literature. See, we will see in detail in further explanation why this hemlock is a very poisonous tree, why this, they are considering it's a poisonous tree, okay, why they are, why he has, uh, or in which angle the poet has used the word hemlock here. So my point is here, when he was walking by the tree, he came towards the uh, hemlock tree. When he stood under the hemlock tree, at that time, a crow, has landed on a branch of that tree. When the crow landed on the branch of the tree, the sudden moment of crow shake the tree and due to that the snow has fallen on the poet and because, because of this little incident, what has happened? His mood has totally changed. I told you, at the beginning the poet was a very sad, very nervous and in that situation he was walking out. Okay, and this little incident had changed his mood, and the snow and the hemlock tree could save the life, or could save the day of poet. And because of that, he is expressing his thanks to hemlock tree and crow. That is the central thing. That is the central meaning. That is the surface meaning of this poem. What exactly is given? That we will discuss in. By explaining in detail. See, if you look at the theme of this poetry, it is very important. See, nature has a healing and curing power. This is a very, very important point because it's the central idea about this poem. It's a theme of the poem on this theme. Theme, you definitely have a question in the exam. So, friends, pay attention here. Nature has a healing and curing power. See? Nature has a power. Whenever we see towards the greenery, by that time we are getting a pleasure. Same situation is here presented by the poet. When he was in a disappointed, when he was so sad, at that time he roamed out in the nature. 
and that nature helps him to change his mood and because of that the major theme is here nature has a healing and curing power second thing small events in the person's life can have a large significance small events in a person's life can have a larger significance this is another central idea this is another central point of this poem it is a another central theme of this poem what is the small event that small event already i told you the poet was a uh, uh, sad he was unhappy and in that situation he was walking out whenever he come towards the hemlock tree that incident that is the smallest incident and that incident could change his mood okay and because of that the small events in a person's life can have a larger significance it is the another theme of this poem one should hope for the best even in the worst situation see friends the poet want to convey the message through all this poem though we have a depression though we have we are feeling sad then also in that situation we don't have to lose our hope okay for so for best even a worst situation though we are sad though we are nervous then also we don't have a loss of our hope that is a central point that is the central idea about this poem and if you look at the message in the world of robert frost only always always a larger significance a little thing touch a larger thing this is the message of this poem now we we'll turn towards actual meaning of this poem how does poet explain a little things okay and how that little thing could change his life to uh, could save his mood that things we will explain in detail now now friends let's deep in the poem we will start what does poet want to say okay line by line we will explain the meaning of this poem that does also does also the way a crow shook down on me the dust of snow from a hemlock has given my heart a change of mood and save some part of a day i had ruled so friends dust of snow means the particles of a snow that already we are discuss another word is here hemlock 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 is a poisonous plant okay with a small white flowers shook means here pass from the shell what does the poet say in the first stanza of this poem that we will discuss the way a crow shook down on me already i told you the poet was in a sad mood he was unhappy on that day why he was unhappy what had happened that reason has not explained by the poem for the reader that reasons he has not given why he was upset, uh, upset why he was sad that reasons he has not given for the reader okay he says that the way a crow shook down on me it means in that upset mood he was walking by the tree he reached towards the hemlock tree and when he was under the hemlock tree a crow landed on the tree already i told you the poet the poem said in winter season and what is the atmosphere of winter that already i have explained you okay see in that situation what is there the snow that tree covered by the snow and a crow came there and it landed on the tree and due to this movement what happened shook down on me when the crow landed on the branch of the tree due to the shake of that uh, crow what happened the dust of snow from a hemlock tree what happened there due to the shake of that crow a uh, snow fallen on the poem where it is fallen it has fallen on the palm it has fallen on the shoulder that specifically he has not mentioned but that moment gave a pleasure to a poet and so he said that the way a crow shook down on me understood the meaning okay now in the next stanza has given my heart a change of mood meaning of mood is very important a state of mind 
and save some part of a day I had rule. See friends, rule means here held in a regret. In the first stanza, that pleasant moment, that crow and hemlock tree, this two symbol has used by the poem. The poet was upset and in that upset mood he was roaming outside, he came towards the hemlock tree. Okay, at that time a uh, crow came there and due to the shake of crow, the snow was fallen, the snow fall down, fall on the poet and that moment, that moment gave a pleasant that was a pleasant moment for the poet. This is the first time that in the second part has given my heart a change of mood. See, he says that that moment, that little incident, okay, has change of mood. That little incident has changed the mood of the poet and saved some part of a day I had wrote. He is giving thanks in the in this time that the poet is giving thanks to a uh, crow and hemlock tree. Why? Because they could say that his unfruitful day being rested. They could save his time, they could save his day. And so, so he is expressing his thanks towards the crow and hemlock tree. Understood this? This is the surface meaning of this poem. This is the meaning of this poem. If you want, I hope that you understood this poem. Now we will discuss a uh, symbol of this poem. I have discussed with you, I talked with you about the central idea of this poem, about the surface meaning of this poem. Now, I told you the poet has used certain symbols. That what are the symbols that we will discuss now? Hemlock tree. See, the first symbol that poet used, I told you the poet stood under the hemlock tree. That hemlock tree associated with the dead poisons. In the literature, in English literature, this word used to denote the poisonous things. See, one reference is there, the Socrates, the famous philosopher also uh, killed by using the toxics of hemlock tree. Okay, by using the toxic products of hemlock tree. Okay, that reference is having and so most of the poet use this word to denote what a poison things. And in this poem, the poet used to present a sad and beautiful mood. I told you the poet was absent, and that absent mood he has presented by using the symbol of hemlock tree. Second symbol he used here that is a symbol of crow, and that indicates fear, sorrow, and even a death. See, this is also uh, a, another symbol that poet used in this poem that is a symbol of crow and that indicates the fear, sorrow and even a death. The next symbol that poet used here that is the dust of snow that symbolizes a joy and energy. See, it means in short the poet want to convey here if you put your negative energy, negative feeling aside then you may enjoy the experience of see, joy and energy then you may enjoy your day what you have to do we have to just uh, put aside your negative feelings and because of that we can enjoy your day okay how that hemlock tree crew could save his day that he has presented throughout this poem this is the symbol of this poem okay after the discussion of a symbol in the poem now we will turn towards the poetic device used in the poem the first poetic device that is the alliteration. Alliteration means what? The repetition of a consonant sound. See, has a given my heart. Here the word H and H repeated. So the figure of speech is here alliteration. And save some part. Another line is here. Save some part. These are the examples of alliteration. The poet used alliteration to enhance the glory of the poem in this poetry. Another figure of speech that used by the word that is the assonance. Okay, it is the opposite of alliteration. Assonance means when we are keeping a trace on a vowel sound that is called assonance. Here the O is a prominent sound and so the figure of speech here shook down on me. Some more figure of speech are there that is the symbolism 
the poet has used the crow and hemlock symbol that already I told told you. Okay. Then after he has used the rhyming scheme that is the a the rhyming scheme of this poem. A B A B that rhyming scheme used by the poet and one more important thing enjoyment is another figure of speech is having there enjoyment means what without punctuation mark when the lines are uh, given that is called enjoyment that enjoyment figure of speech is also having in this poem so friends today we have discussed the dust of snow okay how was the poet disappointed why he was disappointed that reason specifically not mentioned by the poet but how he was disappointed he was disappointed on that day and how the hemlock tree and uh, uh, crow okay that they could save his day that has been presented by the poet throughout this poem it means he want to convey if you put our negative feeling aside then definitely you can enjoy your day that is a message of this poem that we have discussed in today's lecture so we will stop here in next lecture we will discuss the question answer based on this poetry thank you very much